Good afternoon everyone. Today we're going to see how to have our AI patrol randomly around the map. And as soon as they see the player, it's going to chase the player. So I'm going to make my character appear. And now I'm here. It's chasing me no matter where I go. So the computer is running faster than I, I do. So it's on purpose. So I'm going to disappear. And now it's going to go back on patrol somewhere. So we're going to see how to do that. So I'm going to open the other project. So I'm gonna go back in the normal project that I have here. And the first thing that we have to do, it's creating the enemy base blueprint. So how to do that? Well, go to the third person character blueprint, take the third person character, just right click on it, duplicate, and rename that enemy base BP. And just put it wherever you need to, and we're gonna open it. One more in it here, from even begin play right we're gonna create a sequence and we're gonna cast our character which is my ue5 blueprint make sure you connect in the object you get player character and when you click on it promote to a variable okay when you have that done we're all set and good to go so in the enemy base here in the component setting click add and add a pound sensing Right, the pound sensing will be what's gonna help the AI to chase the player around the map. It's like you watching someone and you just follow him, right? That's the same thing. So we need this. So when you have uh, the pound sensing here, you have all the settings. So the site radius is how far you want the computer to see. Uh, the sensing interval is how often you want this to be cast. So it's a little bit like an event tick. You remember event tick, it's every frame which is 30 frame cast 30 time and 60 frame 60 time so here it's a little bit the same but it's going to be cast every 0.5 seconds or you can put at one second if you want just to save a little bit of performance uh, you decide what you want to do and here it's the angle that you want your character to see so if we go in the viewport here and i put on example uh 50 you can see that the character can only see through that green cone so i'm going to put back at 80 the default value it's 90. Uh, you put the number that you want no big deal so we're going to compile that and now we will be all set and ready to go to do our logic here but to have the ai move on the map we need to add the little thing so what we're going to do here we're going to search for nav mesh so just tap nav and you're going to take the nav mesh bound volume just click on this and drag that to your level here so this is going to allow the computer to tell where it can go so i'm just going to put that bigger and i'm just going to downsize here just a little bit bigger that way so if you see now you have those line around so if you want to see exactly where the computer can go you can click here on show and you can click here in navigation and you're gonna see the green so wherever it's green the ai is able to go there right obviously if there's no object blocking the path right so now our ai will be able to move everywhere here so i'm gonna remove the show here and i'm gonna go back to our enemy base blueprint so from here we're gonna create the petrol custom event so we're gonna create custom event and we're gonna call that patrol from here for an R sequence one, we're just gonna call patrol. So as soon as the game start, or I mean, as soon as that blueprint come to play, uh, it's gonna cast patrol and the computer is gonna start moving around. So the first thing we have to do here, well, I want a certain speed for my patrol, for my AI. I don't want my AI to, to run at 600 all the time because the default value is 600. So what I'm gonna do just to uh, restrain the movement, I'm gonna drag the ca uh, character movement here and I'm just gonna set the max walk speed. So we're gonna just set max walk speed and I'm gonna take this one and just plug it here. So from that here, you're gonna promote this to variable and you're gonna name that patrol, patrol walk speed. And you're gonna plug it right there, okay? And this, when you compile, you're gonna be able to change the value. So 
600 is the top speed, 300 is gonna make uh, the AI walk. So I'm gonna put 300 here. So from this now, we want the AI to go to a certain location. So we're gonna drag from max walk speed and I'm gonna search for AI move to. And I'm gonna take the one with the little window here. So from that, well, we need to tell the AI where to go. So the destination will be a random location in the map. So we can search for get random reachable point in radius. Just click on this. The origin will be the location of our computer. So we can drag from that and just get actor location. And from the radius, you're going to click on it and promote this to a variable. And the radius is how far you want your character to patrol each time, right? So 500, 5,000 unit, if you go back here, and you remember when you click on the character, it's all that uh, yellow around here, right? So we want to have the character being able to run everywhere here. You know, for example, if you put 100, it's just going to move here, 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 here. It's just going to be not looking good. So a bigger the number, better it is. But you have to play a certain number, obviously. So I put 5,000 here. I'm just going to plug it right there. I'm going to tell you why I'm doing variable. So basically, instead of always putting the number directly in, because it's an enemy-based blueprint, we're going to do child later for other enemy. So when we're going to go in default class for the other, uh, we're going to be able to set up that from our child blueprint. So we won't have to go back in this blueprint to change it manually. So by doing the variable, it's going to save us uh, some time and some headache. So I'm just doing it that way. But if you don't want to have other enemy from the base one, you can just put the number directly if you wish to. So from this after that, well, the only thing we have to do uh, it's from pound here. We're going to make sure that it's for itself. And when we're done on success, all that, what we want to do, well, we want to patrol again, right? So we're going to call patrol again. So it's going there, set the max walk speed to 300. It's going to move to a random location. And when it's moved to that random location, it's going to call patrol again and start from the beginning. So we're going to compile that and save it and we're going to see if it's worked so let's go back to your map click play now you should see the computer the ai is running everywhere so which is good so it's exactly what we want so that's perfect so it's just roaming around randomly so that's exactly what we want perfect so now we have that done we're going to go back i'm just going to do a comment select everything and click comment and I'm just going to call that patrol logic. There we go. And I'm just going to change the color because I like when the movement is kind of a yellowish. Preferably it's preference. So and here it's the event tick and even begin play. So I like that to just be even begin play. And I'm going to put that in um, blue. So I'm just going to click here. It's just easy to find when you have a lot of codes. So you go by color. So from that now, we're just going to chase the player around. Well, we're going to create another event. So we're going to search for custom event. And I'm going to call this. Uh, actually, I'm not going to create that. I'm just going to click on the pound sensing. And if you go on your detail page here, if you go to the bottom, you have C pound. So we're going to click on this. So it's going to create uh, one for us. So we're going to move that back up here. So from that, it's going to be what is going to chase the player. So from here, I'm going to drag and search for a branch. And the condition here will be invisible. But to be invisible, we have to set something in um, our... Um, characters or my ue5 character uh, it's optional you don't have to do that it's just if you want your character to disappear and reappear so you can try it and see if it's work well 
So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just show you how to do that uh, pretty quick. So you'll be able uh, to try it uh, by yourself. And uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, fast and easy. So the only thing you have to do, it's setting a keyboard on your character. So we're going to go back to your character, my UE5 character. I'm going to go to the event graph. You're going to find some empty space. And just here, I'm going to just search for the letter H. I'm just going to type keyboard H. And I'm going to take H. I'm going to zoom to H. I'm going to search for flip-flop. So just search for flip-flop. So, and I'm going to create another variable. So just click here and create a variable. And I'm going to call that invisible integration and I'm going to drag that right here so actually I'm not going to drag it I'm going to set it so plug it to A check and control C control V and plug it to B and uncheck so from that now we need our mesh so I'm going to take my mesh here so I'm going to drag my mesh I'm going to try my weapon so everything disappear on the map. So from mesh, I'm going to set hidden in game and I'm going to plug it right here. I'm going to plug also the weapon and I'm going to make sure that I check new hidden. And I'm going to copy paste that and this time it's going to be not hidden. So I'm going to uncheck this and I'm going to plug those two together. So now if I compile and try it, the character disappear in the map. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we will be able to use uh, to try that to earn our logic for the AI. So from here, we are gonna take the reference to our UE5 blueprint, and we're gonna search for invisible. So we're gonna get invisible, plug it right there, and now it's gonna work. We'll be able to do that. So. Now we're going to go and just continue our thing. So we're going to click S on our keyboard to have a sequence. From the sequence, well, when the computer is seeing us, I want them to be able to run faster, to chase us. So we're going to take the character movement. We're going to set our max walk speed. And I'm going to plug it right here. So the max walk speed when we're running it's exactly what I want. So I'm going to promote this to a variable. And I'm just going to call that chase walk speed. I'm going to compile. And when it chase, I want them to be able to chase me full speed. So 600. From that, we're going to drag and we're going to move to. We're going to search for AI move to. We're going to take the one with the little window. And what we're chasing? Well, we're gonna chase. We're chasing the pound here. So because our character is a pound, so we're gonna plug it to the target, right? Plug it to the target. And the pound here itself. So we're gonna get the reference to self. And from that, we're all good. So we can go back here. And from the pin number one. We're going to drag down and I'm going to search for a delay, but we're going to search for the retrigable retrigable, this one. Mm -hmm. And you click on this one and I'm going to promote this to a variable once again. And I'm going to call that timer to lose sight. And I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to move this right up here. So what it's doing for us now, it's basically calling back the patrol when it's not seeing us anymore. So the pound see us every 0.5 seconds is going to check if it see a player, which the player is a pound. If it does, it's going to go here in the branch and it's going to see if the player is not invisible obviously if the player is invisible it's going to stop chasing right but as soon as see the player it's going to go to here it's going to set the max walk speed to 600 so the computer is going to start running 
at us and 0.5 seconds later it's going to verify that it can see the player if it doesn't see the player anymore it's going to go to this one here and it's going to have a timer here so that timer need to be more than one point i mean to be higher than 0.5 because the sensing is every 0.5 seconds so remember that so i'm going to put two because i want the computer to be able to chase me two seconds after the side of me so it's not like like right now and just st stopping like and just go back on patrol uh the computer will be able to kind of see oh if you went behind a wall so i have two seconds to go see behind the wall kind of something like this and if you're not there well it's gonna call back patrol which is this one here and it's gonna go set the max walk speed to 300 and continue patrol everywhere so what we're gonna do we're just gonna select all of that and we're gonna name it basically it's our chase uh, player logic so chase player logic when seen and I'm just gonna take the color here so just a copy and paste it there so having exactly the same color I'm just getting picky here so comply and save now we're gonna try that so let's go play here and as soon as you see us it should chase us so let's see if it's work can you see me I'm right here well doesn't want to see me I guess so let's go back there and oh actually I did a little mistake here so it's not from true here it's from false right so let's try that again so let's see if it can see me so I'm here you come see me oh my goodness here we go so it's chasing me so I'm running I'm running I'm running can see me I'm pressing H and disappear and go back on patrol randomly somewhere I'm gonna wait that it's look at me if it's gonna do it and I'm there chase me I stop disappear two seconds later go back on patrol so you can see that everything is working fine so hopefully this was useful and probably in the next one we'll see how to do damage to the enemy so we can kill the enemy and maybe have more to spawn and just continue like this so we'll catch you in the next one see ya